What's up everyone, Adam here from Cape Crawlers and this is the SCX24 Deadbolt Build Part 1. Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome officially to the Axial SCX24 Deadbolt Build. Now if you've seen my 5 first mods video, you've seen kind of the prologue to this build series. Well I think I finally settled on what I want to do with our little red deadbolt here for the long term. And I'm going to start this series with the goal of turning this into a competition style rig. So we're, we're closing in on the end of the Bronco build, so we're going to ramp up the deadbolt build as we conclude the Bronco build series. So this is officially part one of the deadbolt build series. So going back to the prologue, to the five first mods that we did to this thing, let's recap what we've done to the little deadbolt, and then we'll talk about the goals for the build as a whole, and then talk about what we'll do in this episode of the build. So what we've done is... A handful of things. We added wheels and tires. So we've got the Endura beadlock wheels, the Proline Hyrax tires. We added a new steering servo. We've got the Emax analog servo in there on the aluminum mount. We have got some brass diff covers front and back with a heavy brass cover on the front, lighter on the back to kind of bias the weight forward there. We did a few free mods. You know, we relocated the rear shocks to get more articulation and more travel out of the rear. We also did the low center of gravity chassis mod where we relocated the battery to the front and the ESC to the back. And also while we had the diff covers off, we put the 23% overdrive gears in there. Now overdrive gears, if you don't know, they make the, if you put them in the front, let me say that, whichever diff you put them in, it's gonna make those wheels spin faster. So you typically wanna overdrive the front because if your front tires are spinning faster, it's gonna grip more in the front as opposed to the rear, which helps with climbing. So that's why I recommend that as a good, cheap, kind of bang for the buck mod in the beginning. We also added hex extensions and wheel weight combos. So we've got our plus seven millimeter heavy wheel hexes in here. So we've got some good weight down low. We've improved our steering. We've kind of tweaked our suspension a little bit. Now we're ready for the next step. So what are we gonna do in this phase of the build? Let's take a look at the parts and accessories that we got for this episode. Here we are, our starting point. So I'm almost afraid to mess with this thing because it is so good how it sits right now. But I can see a couple areas where we need to improve. Most notably is the steering. So up front, we kept this steering linkage and it's real sloppy. You know, it just flops around. Definitely needs some some TLC in the front there. Now you can put those little O-rings, you can put the little O-rings in these linkage points and that will help tighten up your stock setup. But we're gonna throw an RC all-wheel drive billet aluminum linkage on here. So we've got steering linkage we're gonna do. We're also going to continue with the weight. I got some Endura brass Steering knuckles we're gonna put on here. I really like steering knuckles because they're stationary. It's not rotating mass. You get nice heavy weight right down on the front wheels, but it's not rotating, it's just fixed right there. So we've got these good brass steering knuckles. I think these are about 10 grams a piece, if I remember correctly. While we've got the knuckles off, I'm going to throw in a set of RC all-wheel drive CVD front axles. These are not extended, these are stock length, but the CVDs just give you smoother steering and better control at extreme steering angles. And then finally, I've noticed with all this extra weight, stock motor is about to give up the ghost. So we got a Mofo RC Torque Beast in 30 size. Give us a little extra punch. So now that we've had a look at our upgrades, let's do our baseline course run. If you remember correctly, the little deadbolt slayed Mini Moab after the upgrades that we did in the first five upgrade video. So it set the bar pretty high, but let's revisit the course and see if we can repeat that performance to give us a good baseline before we get into the install of the new parts. Let's go check it out. All right, so baseline course runs. Let's start out with the chute. Next we'll do Hell's Gate. Boy, it amazes me how good this thing is. And 
Now the escalator. So now that we have a good baseline, let's get into our install here. So a lot of the components that we have here are going to be in the front end. So I think I'm going to start on the front end and take the front end apart and start putting these things on here. And we'll take the knuckles off, then we'll do the axles, put the new knuckles on, and then we'll reassemble with the new steering linkage. I say new, it's new to the deadbolt, as you can see these are these are gently used parts. One of the greatest things about the SCX24 is that the interchangeability of parts lets you just swap things in and out of builds. So a lot of this was from the Bronco build. And as the Broncos evolved, now we've got these still solid parts in our bin here. And we're going to put them to good use on the old deadbolt here. So I'm going to start tearing the front end apart. And we'll get into this first step. And then we'll do the motor once I get the front end complete good thing about the MoFo motor is that it uses the stock mounting plate. So it's a really easy install, but I'll show you that when we get there. So let's get into the front end here. We'll start doing these three. Here we are in disassembly mode here. So we've got the front end pretty much apart. It comes apart really easy. This is a nice simple set of mods that should have good bang for the buck here. Steering linkage comes off. It's all kind of sequential. So do the steering linkage. Next we'll do the knuckles. Knuckles come right off. See the dog bones pop right off. Grab my brass knuckles here. Always want to check to make sure whether or not you have to use your bearings or if your new knuckles come with them. In this case, there are no bearings in the new knuckles. So let's see, we've got to pop these out. the inner. Here's our outers. There's one. Okay, so now we're good to go. We can put the new knuckles together, but we're not going to install them yet. So a quick pointer here when you're doing steering knuckles. When you mount these, this outer section is going to be pointing downward. So that's how you can tell which one is which there. Let's see how the axles angle up. The knuckles angled down, coupled together, they make a nice straight line. So I remember, always remember, knuckles, you want the outside pointing down. That's how you differentiate left and right. So we'll set those guys apart. We'll do the same thing, make sure that I've got the right knuckle set up. So that's our right side. Yep, left side. Now we're going to swap axles here. Well, we've got the knuckles off. One thing, the pain in the butt with these axles when they come apart, the CVDs. These things are held together almost like, you know, it's got like the same pin that your wheels use. But it's got this collar that goes over the union here. And this, when this pops out, man, it's a pain in the butt to get this back together. So, so try to keep that in there as much as possible. All right, so now to take the old axles out. So your dog bones just slide out. The outer axle stubs just slide out of the knuckles. So set those aside. And then we're just going to pull these guys out nice and gentle. They should slide right out just like that. Now we're just going to slide the new ones in. 
Get a little twist, you'll feel it engage there. That one's good to go. Do not want to lose that bearing. There we go. Just twist it till you feel them engage. You'll hear an audible kind of click when they slide in place and then just make sure that they're solid. You'll feel it when they get in there. So now our axles are installed. Let's put our knuckles together. Make sure, I think we went over this too when we did the five first mods putting the overdrive gears in here. Make sure that you adjust your knuckles before you put your steering linkage on there because you want to make sure you've got no drag on these knuckles. So you make sure they're nice and free, that your bolts are snugged up enough that these aren't going to go anywhere, but you don't want them to be over tightened. So always situate the knuckles first make sure they're good before we take the next step in installing the linkage, steering linkage. These guys look great, so I think we're good. Now we'll put the new steering linkage together. thing I like to do here too is pause and plug it in, turn it on, make sure that my servo is straight. So I know that it's centered so I can put the horn on in the right place. Look at that, nice looking setup, huh? I like it. Looks good. All right. Now that that's done, let's move on to the motor install. Okay, are we ready for a heart transplant? Then we're gonna swap the motor. So it's funny when I originally fried my first motor in a 124, I was terrified to replace it, and now it's like the most simple thing to do. So it comes out super easy. There's really just three bolts. So we got one here, we got two on the bottom, and then we can yank the transmission and the motor and everything right out, and it's a super easy process. So I'm gonna get going on dismantling this thing, and I'll pop in and out of here, show you some key points as we go along, and we'll get this thing done and then fired up with the new motor. Now we've got the old motor out, we can put the new motor in. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, one of the best things about the Torque Beast and the 30 size particularly, is that there is so little else that you need to do in the way of modifications to bolt this thing up. See the 30 size, it's exactly the same size as the stock motor, so there's no trimming or anything we need to do to the chassis. Had the battery tray been in the factory location, we wouldn't have to cut anything off. Whereas a 50 size motor, I've got one I can show you. I almost put the 50 size in here, but I figured I would try the Torque Beast 30. There's the 50, as you can see, significantly bigger. But we're gonna rock the 30 size for this go around. And if I feel like I need more power, I've got plenty of motors lying around. But I think at this stage in the build, it's still pretty light. I think the Torque Beast 30 will do just fine. 
And with the 30 size motor, you still get tons of torque, tons of low end power. It's super smooth. You just sacrifice a little top end speed. And I don't care about that in any way, shape or form. So that doesn't bother me. So out with the old, in with the new. Reuses a stock mounting plate. So it's real, real easy install. Just start bolting this thing together. There's just a couple key points here that I want to highlight before I wrap this thing up. All right, so just a couple points. Most important being when you put this transmission gear back on, do not over tighten this nut that goes on here. It really just needs to be tight enough so that there's no sloppiness in the gear. And that's about it. I learned this the hard way. If you over tighten it, you will burn out motors like crazy. So just be very cautious about how tight you make this. Just make it snug enough so that that gear isn't moving around. There, that should be good. Nice and smooth, no drag. That's what we want. So now we'll start reassembling and we're almost done. We are, motor is installed. Let's do a quick test. Make sure we're good before we wrap it up. Looks good. Now I have one more quick modification that I wanna do before I put this thing back together, and that is on the body. So I'm not a fan of this roll cage, particularly in the back where it's got this clam shell or turtle shell look to it right here. So I'm gonna cut this off. And I've done this on Snaggletooth, my green deadbolt, but we're gonna do this here too. And it just gives it more of a fast back look to the cage. So I'm gonna clip these off and that'll complete our mods for this episode. Once again, handy dandy snips. And there, now we're gonna clean this up with some sandpaper, but just a nice, clean, smoother look there. I prefer that much more. So I'm gonna clean this up, then we'll put old firecracker back together here and then hit the course. Here it is, a little deadbolt. Looking good. Not a lot of dramatic changes. You know, the fastback cage looks a lot nicer, I feel. But visually, that's probably the most noticeable. The red linkage, steering linkage up front looks really nice. But what we're gonna really hopefully see is some good performance gains on the course. You know, this is not a lot of show in these mods. We should get some good go out of these things though. So very easy install, motor, knuckles, linkage, everything went together, super easy. You know, this is just a really nice bang for the buck stuff here. So why don't we get this on the course and see how it worked out. Okay, here we go. Let's try the shoot. Very nice. Now let's try Hell's Gate. Oh, 
so easy. And the escalator. There we have it. Part one of the build officially kicked off. You know, this thing makes me so happy and so sad at the same time. I'll tell you why it makes me sad is because it is so remarkably capable with so little work. And I think about all the hundreds of dollars, more than hundreds of dollars that I've put into each one of my other builds to try to get performance like this. When in reality, I probably blew past the optimal point of modification very early on in the build. It is just incredible how capable the little deadbolt is with so little work. And I feel like I have wasted so much money on my other stuff. But it's so much fun doing the other stuff. And the customization aspect is great. So I don't regret it whatsoever. It's just hilarious to me how incredibly good this little deadbolt is with such little modification. It's just crazy, right? I mean, I don't know what else I want to do to this thing because it can climb so well. It's probably hard to even tell how much it gained from those videos because it was so good to begin with. But I can tell you that what I was looking for was a little more, a little more power. You know, it was seemed to be bogging down and you know, I had to get really aggressive with the trigger finger on some of the obstacles. You know, I'd get kind of stuck at some really aggressive climbs. With the new motor, it was really able just to breeze right up there, even with the added weight in the front. So I feel like it's got more grip. I feel like it's got more power. It's smoother, more control. So it just, again, kind of you know, making incremental progress in the right direction, trying to find that tipping point where we start just throwing money away just for the sake of adding mods. And I think we still made good progress here today. I will tell you that I wish I'd gone with the 50 size motor. I thought the 30 was going to be enough for this thing, but I already noticed a couple sections where I wish I had more power. So probably in the next episode, we'll beef up the motor. I think I'll throw the 50 size. And if I'm going to do it, I think I'll probably just do the Pro 50, the big Endura motor. We'll see. Or maybe I'll get a Torque Beast 50 size. I don't know. We'll see. But I think that's the one drawback that I've noticed from this build is that I wish I'd just gone with the bigger motor to begin with. But thankfully, it's an easy swap. But otherwise, man, this thing is a little monster. So I'm really excited to keep going. I have to think about what else I want to do. Whether I want to start working on the body. You know, I think I'm going to order a cliffhanger body for this. Not quite sure. Even now that I've trimmed the cage to get that fastback look, I like it a lot better. So we'll see. But I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to have fun with it. I'm going to keep playing with it, tinkering with it, kind of think about what I want to do next. You know, let me know your thoughts down below. What should we do next to this thing? It's really, really good as it is right now. So I'm anxious to see what else I can do to this thing without spoiling what we've got so far. But let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And stay tuned as we continue to build this thing out into a competition little beast. So stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.